in that not understanding it kind of like sets up this this loop that's going around mentally but it also the emotions of it and it all kind of gets stuck in our bodies that's the key stuck in our bodies yeah yeah so, so do you want to talk a little bit more about that yes oh my goodness me so when i when when i did the emotional freedom technique training what i now recognize as eft is so far advanced in understanding trauma than any of the mainstream medical um, therapies out there, like psychiatry, psychology, etc. And I and and when we did the training, they talked about, you know, straight away the writings on the walls in terms of your history, your family history of trauma, and how that how you're parented because of how your parents were parented because of their trauma, and then learning that our physical bodies are storing what it is we experienced emotionally as energy energy and motion is emotions in our body that then gets locked in to a fight flight freeze fawn response which then works as a what what was once a strategy to help us navigate life because we had a shocking moment that we couldn't focus i uh, couldn't um deal with in a, in a positive resourceful way so then we get locked into trying to unconsciously always resolve what we couldn't resolve at the time of trauma and our bodies are just in this perpetual a heightened state of, of avoidance or seeking and then our mind is just following whatever the body is feeling and so that's how the thoughts get created they are being created the negative thinking the negative self-belief the doubt the anxiety the anxious thoughts the worry the control thoughts are all just being stemmed from all of this emotion in the body that was never ever dealt with at the time of the trauma Welcome to the Magical New Beginnings podcast, where I invite you to join me on a journey of inspiration and wisdom as we navigate the transformative phases of new beginnings together. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Sonia Cortes to the Magical New Beginnings podcast. Welcome, Sonia. Hello, Sharon, beautiful friend. It's so lovely to reconnect. <laughs> Oh, it's so lovely to see you. And I, I, I know it was such a short moment of us almost catching one another in Thailand last year. So it's so lovely to reconnect and reignite our, um, our lovely journey together because we share very similar passions. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Son Sonia, just tell us a little bit about who you are and your passions. Let's yeah, well. There. I'm going to start with my age because I think it's quite good for context for today's chat. I'm 49. I live in Christchurch, New Zealand. I am, I call myself an integrated health practitioner because I work with people with stress, anxiety, and I'm really all about helping people get to the root cause of why they might be experiencing some types of uh, challenges in their life where they might be stuck on a health issue. They might be stuck in an emotional issue, stuck in a relationship. And my job is to help unpack and help them heal and overcome those things from their past that are have got them in their current state of dis-ease yeah and put them back into ease and well-being so that's my role no no titles attached it's just you know fingers in a lot of pies to just support women particularly to find their uh, balance again yeah. mentally physically spiritually yeah absolutely um, yeah, we're both in the, the field of the mind, body, soul connection mm -hmm. and how uh, mainly our past, our traumas are kind of affecting us in the, the now moment and also how we project those traumas into the future. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your um, your journey into why why you've gone into this particular area? Why is why is this such a big passion for you? Do you know, it's an interesting one because it, it's a, it, if you go back, it probably started from the moment my brother, so my brother at the age of 15, I was 17, he took his own life. He committed suicide. I don't like saying committed suicide. He just chose to leave. And mm -hmm. it was right before I started university. So I went to uni and I'd always said, I want to do psychology. So I went to psych, did psychology at uni, got two, two and a half years in and went, there's something not sitting right with me with this. There's a, there's, there's a lot of care missing, a lot of it. I just have this 
resonance of not working and then I also failed my statistics papers which you have to have for psychology and that's when I went this no this is not work right fast forward to my own personal healing journey recognized obviously in my mid late 20s that I was actually under experiencing significant trauma from childhood upbringing stuff and mainly my brother's passing so I went on a personal journey of self-development personal development did a lot of trainings and courses and through that a beautiful process a life coach introduced me to emotional freedom technique and she said I've heard of this thing called EFT you should go look it up I don't do it but you should give it a go so of course I went found a video of a woman called Violet on YouTube did the tapping this is back in 2010 I think 2011 Mm -hmm. next minute life-changing and in that moment, I remember because I was a secondary school teacher. So once I finished psychology, I went to um, study classics, became a teacher. So I was working with all these young traumatized youth, a lot of my brothers of the world. So I recognized so many patterns within these young boys and girls of tra- and what I now learned is no, is trauma, which affects their learning, which affects their behavior. And I was on a personal journey in a sort of parallel you know, line. And then when I started to do more and more healing, both physically, mentally, spiritually, I could see what was happening for these young people. And I just started saying, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. This is not working, you know, traditional counseling, talk therapy. And that's when I found the EFT. So then through my personal healing journey of doing matrix free imprinting and EFT, I then decided to become a practitioner. And that was back, I became a fully qualified practitioner in 2012. Mm -hmm. And as they say, the rest is history. And I've been learning a lot of other different modalities since your amazing um, birth trauma healing has just been life-changing for for so many of my clients. And here I am now helping women because yes, men need it too. And I get a lot of male clients, but it's, it's the women that I'm finding are really starting to recognize and the ones doing the work. And I know because I've done the work and I'm doing the work and I continue to. So why not share what I've learned and what I've been through myself to help others? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. You know, when you think about um, when I talk about the life purpose and how we find our purpose, and it's quite often comes through experiencing a a loss or a a big trauma in life. So it's interesting that it was your brother's passing that that put you on this this quest to find something something more and to Mm. understand. And I think that's the thing about trauma as well, is that the biggest part of the trauma is that we don't understand. No, we don't don't understand. In that not understanding, it kind of like sets up this this loop that's going around mentally, but it also the emotions of it, and it all kind of gets stuck in our bodies. That's the key, stuck in our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Oh my goodness me. So when I when when I did the emotional freedom technique training, what I now recognize as EFT is so far advanced in understanding trauma than any of the mainstream medical um, therapies out there, like psychiatry, psychology, et cetera. And and when we did the training, they talked about, you know, straight away the writings on the walls in terms of your history, your family history of trauma and how that, how you're parented because of how your parents were parented because of their trauma. And then learning that our physical bodies are storing what it is we experienced emotionally as energy, energy in motion is emotions in our body that then gets locked in to a fight, flight, freeze, fawn response, which then works as a what what was once a strategy to help us navigate life because we had a shocking moment that we couldn't focus, uh, couldn't um, deal with in a, in a positive, resourceful way. So then we get locked into trying to unconsciously always resolve what we couldn't resolve at the time of trauma. And our bodies are just in this perpetual uh, heightened state of, of avoidance or seeking. And then our mind is just following whatever the body is feeling. And so that's how the thoughts get created. They are being created the negative thinking, the negative self-belief, the doubt, the anxiety, the anxious thoughts, the worry, the control thoughts are all just being stemmed from all of this emotion in the body that was never, ever dealt with at the time of the trauma. 
And so now we're just these, you know, as we know, Dr. Bessel van der Kolk's work, the body keeps the score. We're now just these locked yeah. in uh, mechanisms for stress and anxiety because we we never knew how to deal with it at the time. And of course, tapping is one of those ones that lets you deal with it, whether at the time or afterwards. Absolutely. You know, when I, I did my, um, the first three days EFT level one and two training, um, and I was kind of felt like I was divinely led to go and, and do this training. And the, there was the one person that was just like five minutes of tapping. All right. And this woman was kind of like, I, I always think of her as my convincer. You know, sometimes we need to we need to have a convincer sometimes. It's like people can tell you how good something is, but until you're experiencing it yourself or see somebody else experience, you don't believe it. And there was this one woman that I clearly remember. She had had a frozen shoulder for three years, right? She couldn't lift her arm above that. And um, we started tapping and, and Carl Dawson, who was um, teaching the group, said to her, you know, how, um, how long have you had this? She said three years. And he said, well, what happened three years ago? You know, around the time you got your frozen so shoulder. And she said, well, she said, my effing husband ran off with a younger woman. And he said, okay, so is it fair to say that there's like anger in your shoulder? Because she's like, she brought up the color of being red and orange and, oh. you know, really fiery energy so yeah so there was all this anger and she had locked it down in her shoulder so they literally just did some tapping on this my husband ran off with a effing younger woman all right and within five ten minutes he said to her right now lift your arm up and just see how high you can get it and she went like that like five minutes like job done because she addressed and understood that that anger she had towards her husband leaving her was all locked and stored in that in that shoulder it doesn't surprise i mean i'm sitting here with look at the look on my face going oh, if i will never ever not be amazed by these stories because i know you just we know we know we experience it all the time in our work but you for the average person, there's this whole thing that it has to be hard sometimes when actually sometimes it is as simple as what you've just described, going to the emotion that is being stored in the body. And, and I've just been to the New Zealand Trauma Conference with Dr. Van der Kolk, and he said, don't go into the story, go into the emotions and, and the feelings that you're feeling because of what happened and really go there with that and, and let the person feel it and bring the emotions up because when you do that, well, that's like taking, I always use the analogy of that's like taking the lid off the boiling pot that's simmering and it's boiling over and you've turned the heat right up and it's making a mess. And they go, well, EFT is just taking the lid off, letting mm -hmm. it let off some steam and then turning the thermostat down. So then we just get this lovely soup at the end of it, you know? So yeah. that's what this process is all about. It's about like, getting to the root cause of why you feel the way you do. Absolutely. So... So now I'd like to talk a little bit about hormones, especially, you know, because it's a personal thing to me right now, uh, having gone through the menopause and having some experience of body experience of it. So you work, you work a lot with women with hormone balance and. Um, well, it's interesting because uh, when they come to me, they're not, they're not here specifically to work on their hormone balance, but I share a lot of my work online about let's stop blaming hormones as the problem yes. let's look at why you know our bodies and and yes you'll have the medical system say it's the drop in estrogen and then you'll say well actually it's the progesterone if you want to really be honest because that lifts the estrogen out because you haven't got this beautiful cycle of you know the progesterone and the estrogen working together and so my work is in helping women deal with the chronic stress the overwhelm the um all of that stuff that has caused a woman to be so detached from her body that she's been living in this chaotic fight or flight response for so long that her there's no way her hormones could be balanced there's no way that she could be in a state of homeostasis because she's mm -hmm. been full throttle on the accelerator for decades and mm -hmm. so from just having these women come with these imbalanced hormones i i, I almost 
am sort of pitching myself a bit more now as a lifestyle practice, medicine practitioner because this is part of the, the the approach that I advocate for is great, take the HRT if you think that's the answer. But if the HRT is only dealing with the hormonal imbalance and the hormonal imbalance is because of the things I've just mentioned, then you're missing 80 to 90% of the opportunity to get things back on track for yourself. And of course, Absolutely. as a perimenopausal woman myself, who started to really go through all of the things like the weight gain and the sleeplessness and the um, hot flushes and all of that, I personally have reversed all of it by taking this lifestyle medicine approach. So mm. I'm just screaming from the rooftops, women, there's a better way. Absolutely. They've medicated Absolutely. us enough. Can we exactly. stop it? Birth, you know, birth control's stuffing us up. Now we're going, and you know, and all the threats of increased cardiovascular disease and all the threats of increase of, you know, osteoporosis. Well, there are plenty of ways that we can counterbalance that by doing other things like exercise and movement and reducing stress. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's one of the areas um, when I'm working with somebody who's um, trying to get pregnant, infertility, it's like you cannot, if your body is like, if you're a firefighter and you've got a fire blazing in front of you and you're blasting it with, with water, trying to calm or put the fire out, then um, you, you're, you're, you don't have much energy to to cook a meal and do this and do that because you're so busy trying to put the fire out and this is how your body system feels you know you're mm. in such a high state of stress and in order to conceive and build a baby to grow a baby inside of you you have to have that energy you have to have the energy to to, to put into creation and if all your energy is like firefighting everything that's going on with you in your life you know, maybe that's the relationship issues, maybe it's work issues, maybe it's just like you just don't know how to stop and you'll just push, 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 push in your life, then that is going to be a big contributing factor to, um, you know, not being able to have the time and the space and the energy for your body and probably the nutrition as well, because you're going for TV dinners and you're not, you know. So, yeah, I love what you're saying here. It's, it's about the whole lifestyle but it's also about looking at your emotional health, emotional and, and yeah, emotional and mental health in yeah. order to be able to put the fire out. And the, the taking the HRT is just like, it, it's treating the symptom, it's not treating the cause, which is like 99% of all medical pharmaceutical Responses. drugs are, tr yeah, are, tr are treating the symptoms. Let's put out the symptom, but let's not go deeper and find the cause. Yeah. yeah. And of course, women, it's, and it's interesting because for most women, it, it's not even that they wouldn't want to go and look for the cause. For, for so many women now, it's that they didn't, they don't know. They don't know that actually that's what they need to be doing because the education's not there. It's not, it's not there in the mainstream medical system and it's not there in general life, except nowadays it is because you can go to Instagram and learn a, a whole heap. But the other part of that too is that women have been programmed since feminism to believe that they can do it all and run on mm -hmm. a 24 hour cycle, like a testosterone cycle that men have, not realizing that we just do not have the capacity to work full time, be full time mums. You can't, it's just physically impossible. And then, you know, be a, be a present loving wife and a calm person. It's just, they put so much on our plates because then there's a societal pressure to be just on all the time and busy all the time. And if yeah. you're seen to be lying around and reading a book and chilling out and doing what's needed, making love from a place of pleasure to conceive as opposed to a must do, then all of that's just, you know, we've just been compounded and compounded over, you know, decades to just uh, not recognize that we've been doing it really wrong. And unfortunately that boiling pot that I used before, it's over it's it's boiling over now and we're seeing it in women's health we're seeing it in how we're dealing with our menopause how we're mm -hmm. not coping and, and our fertility just again like you say it's not about you know just what the hormones are doing it's why the hormones are doing and we're, we're in a we're, we're in a crisis it's a major crisis 
but only in Western society. Exactly. Yes, we were just talking about that. We were just saying, you know, I'm I'm living here in Thailand now, and many of the women here in Asia they don't they don't have menopause. Like, what is that? Mm. You know, we we can't get any of the. I don't think you think you can get HRT here. You're not allowed to have hormone treatment here. Um, but their lifestyle is, you know, a lot better. I mean, me personally, mm. I take something called the wild yam root capsules. And that just beautifully, you know, it's natural. It balances my 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 hormone system. Um, yes, I probably need to take a little bit of time to go in and and um, you know see what remaining stress my body is holding. But you know, as as a whole, it it really really has has helped me. So, yeah. What what other advice would you give women that may be listening to this and? Um, you know, they're, they're in that, you know, go, 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 go. Um, maybe they've already got their kids and they're juggling, you know, work, relationship, kids, house and everything. What, what, what would, what's your advice to them? Oh, you know, I think, even? yeah, I think about this one a lot because I've chosen a life that isn't one like that. And so, yeah. you know, sometimes I step into the energy of imagining what that must be like and, one of the things that I say straight off the bat is you have to let go of being in control. You have to let go of think of putting everything on your own shoulders, including how much you do for your children. This is the big issue I see doing too much for children or doing too much in their workplace because they want to be these successful business women and mm -hmm. then having, you know, zero capacity to be a present parent but then their children are now no longer connected because their children are on devices all the time. So my one piece, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to work on that little girl inside you that thinks that perfection is the only way that you can be loved because it's the perfection that leads to the, the seeking of perfection that leads to the need to control, which then is creating all the stress in one's life. So it is a case of, we can say, delegate, dele get your kids to do more, but I've seen women do this, right? Okay, I'm just going to let my kids tidy their rooms or I'm not going to make their lunches or I'm going to let my husband do the job that I keep asking him to do, but he doesn't do it as good as I do. And then I see the frenzy of, but he doesn't do it the way I want or, oh, but they just take so long to get it done. It's just easier if I do it. Yes. But of course, that's not the case because, you know, they're so stressed and, and pent up. So it's not even about getting them to delegate. It's about going, well, why, what is going on inside of you in your belief systems and your emotions that has you needing to be the one that takes on the martyr role and do everything for everyone? Because it's really hard to get women to delegate if they have got this limiting belief program about feeling like they're a failure if they're not seen to be doing all the time. And yeah. that's the program I see. I've got to be busy all the time. I've got to be doing. And this whole, oh, I feel so guilty for sitting down and doing nothing. And so then we go, okay, let's just, don't worry about not doing anything. Let's let's work on, well, why is that even a thing for you? Yeah. Can you give us some examples of what you've discovered of why that is a thing for them? First of all, they've seen their mother do it. They watch yes. their mother be busy all the time cleaning, 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 which is part of life. To be fair, generations ago, women had to do all the washing by hand and they had to do everything manually and they didn't have, you know, a cleaner that could come in and, and everything was done by hand. So, of course, you had to be busy quite a lot. But then also, in saying that, a lot of women did things that were very um, uh, re relaxation craft-based, needlework, sewing, knitting. That was, even though you were doing to get something done a lot of that was part of a woman's life it was her, her, to sit, I've got a crochet blanket on my couch here sit down and do a crochet blanket which is yeah. highly meditative highly therapeutic and calming and you're in stillness and you're not thinking about much and you're just doing the things but our particularly our generation of women our mums weren't doing that no they were the first generation coming out the late boomers uh or yeah late boomers actually it's the boomers coming in and saying got to work I'm now responsible for doing a bit more work, I've got to raise my family, and I've got to keep going. I've got to keep going. And so women learn their programming by what they see, 
what they're taught, what we're all humans, not just women, what is suggested to them. Uh, you know, uh, you go to school back my generation and it's, and then the thing became going to university. Yeah, go to university. And so all of a sudden there's all this programming being put into our lives around, you know, a successful woman is one who is doing the work and you can do everything kind of mentality. And yeah, it's, 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 it's really multi-layered, but it's mainly coming from what we experience as children growing up and what our parents and teachers and mothers taught us Absolutely. and what we witnessed and watched. Yeah. And then, yeah. Didn't know any, and then very much a fear of, well, if I'm not perfect, it's the, uh, what am I can't believe I didn't mention this. It's the good girl. Such a good girl. Yes. You just sit over there and play with your dolls. You're oh, you're a good girl. So there's this constant, be a good girl, be a good girl, be a good girl. Mustn't do anything wrong. Don't be too wild. Don't be too out there. And of course, repression, repression of emotions, repression of emotions. Shh, stop crying. And then it just gets repressed, repressed, repressed. And then of course, one day when the body says no, thank you, Dr. Gabo Marte. Yeah. We just have symptom after symptom after symptom. Absolutely. And when you think back to, you know, you mentioned physical exercise. So, you know, when I used to watch my nan, like washing her clothes, she had one of those old fashioned um, boards, washer boards, washer boards and soap. And she used to wash her clothes and then she'd put it through the mangle. And, you know, she there's a level of fitness that comes with doing all that physical work. And nowadays we just have bung it in the washing machine and go and sit back and be back on the computer or on the phone. So, you know, I know personally with, you know, because I did a lot of um, client sessions and sitting a lot on the computer, my physique, if I didn't have my horse, I'd have never have got off my bum and done any exercise. And my body is really suffering because of all those years that I spent glued to my, my computer mm. and not doing that physical work. Now I've gone back to doing a lot more physical exercise and a lot of stuff in my body's, you know, getting a lot better now. So. Yeah, it's really important. And the type of exercise we do as well, because this is the other hormone imbalance thing is we have, you've got them in Thailand, I'm sure, F45 gyms. And women have this somewhere in the 80s with jazzercise and jazzergetics. We had this mentality that we had to push really hard. And the only way we could be lean is to go out running and do all these crazy um, types of exercise that put the body into what's physical stress, because there's three types of stress, chemical, emotional, and physical. And so we've got the emotional stress of being a mum, working hard, raising a family, all of that, and trying to be CEOs. And and then we've got the physical stress of thinking, well, the only way I can be lean is to run a marathon or go out and do a 10K, a 5-10K run or smash myself in some hit session at the gym. Yeah. And so we're spiking our cortisol and our body thinks it's, you know, if you're on a, doing crazy things like burpees, hard out for with other stuff for half an hour your body thinks it's in fight or flight just the hormones are still there the, the stress hormones mm. are still there and so you know like you say washing the washing you know and then everything was done by hand but then let's sit down and do some needlework yes <laughs> so there was balance but the physical was in it was um incidental exercise it was part of lifestyle so the body was moving in various different ways as well not just you know, getting up and going for a run, you know, they, the bodies were far more, uh, what do you say, adaptive to different tasks that they'd be doing. Mm. Do you find that there's um, specific areas of the body that, um, that kind of hold specific emotions or you oh, know, yes. kind of like, yes, <laughs> I know, we oh, can go yes. into For that. women, oh, heck. Uh, the hips, the hips, the, the hip. hips, the hips, a lot of stuff in the hips because hips just store so much emotion. If you think of it from a feminine energy point of view, our hips are where our sacral energy center is, our creativity, our pleasure, our fun, our, our, our um, you know, yeah, creation, creation of life, creation of life force energy. So the stagnant hips, you know, women not moving their hips through dance and anything. And then you've got all the stored emotions from um, the hips, which is all about feeling stuck in life, struggling to move forward, not being able to withstand something, you know, always having to push up against things, always having to push up against life. 
So the hips are the main area that I see. And of course, then the, like you mentioned, the shoulders and the neck area and the lower back. And the lower back yeah. is all about, I don't feel supported. Yeah. I don't feel supported. No one's got my back. Who's, you know, that could be financial, emotional. And then, of course, this is all about, and this is in the throat area, the, um, you know, the, the vocal uh, sacral area. It's all about not feeling heard, yeah. not being able to express myself. My message is not getting across. So I really mm. see a lot of, you know, women with a tight neck and shoulders and just clenching of the jaw from frustration. And, yeah, cool. that's the areas I see the most. What about you? Uh, what do you see? <laughs> very much similar, very, very similar areas, um, you know, especially, you know, the, the sexual areas, the womb, the ovaries, the breasts you know quite yeah. often a lot of um yeah sexual abuse issues you know childhood sexual abuse issues or that all gets locked in in the, the hips um yeah. and in the breast you know breast cancer um but you know i've seen a lot of women you know when you trace it back that there's been some form of mm. um yeah something that's happened towards them to do with their femininity you know or a threat and to their femininity yeah, and I didn't even mention breast, but you know, I was thinking more of the yeah, because in that when in that question I was thinking musculoskeletal. Yes. But yeah, yeah, um yeah. but the the breast is so interesting for women. You look at all these modern women now getting breast cancer, and then we know there's a myriad of reasons for that. Yeah. Yeah, the big one is lack of self-nurture. You know, this is your life force energy and you're not giving back to self. And so there's this this lack of the the, the self-nurture. Or as we know with mental health, unable to nurture something that we wish we could nurture, but that's us. Yeah. That's you as a woman. That's you being able to put time aside for yourself, even just to connect in with your own body, to feel your body, to notice it, to touch it, to to just relax into it and be present with it. Like so many women don't feel comfortable even doing the whole hand on heart, hand on womb connection. And it's all connected. Yeah. Throat area. Yeah sacral area mm -hmm. and heart so we're just yeah. locked down we're locked down and we're repressed and we're stagnant and it's it's a real feeling of locked in that i i see in so many of my clients yeah locked in that is that is a very a very good um term i think because you know a lot of people you see when people as they get older they they start to to almost go back to to the fetal position yeah, don't they and yeah. it's because they've had all of that trauma that's locked into their body that they've never processed and now it's just drawing everything yeah you know, locking it, it in do. even further and I watch women walking you know in their 70s 60s that obviously have never really engaged in some sort of physical activity and their, their hips will be out of line like this they'll be walking and you can see and there's a big limp and I'm thinking you know they're probably spending heaps of money on medical and anti-inflams and all that medical it's intervention and it's just it's you can see the emotion in the body as people are walking I look at people and I think oh I can see what's going on for you I can see the the struggle Oh. And I'm not talking about the physical struggle. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. all the emotional burdens. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Of course, shoulders beautiful. too are about feeling burdened and carrying the heavy load. Yeah, responsibility, aren't they? Mm. They're like carrying yeah. that responsibility. And as women, um, I mean, like going back into to childhood trauma, there are so many people I work with who, and, and, and this is also part of my own story, so I'm I'm very willing to own this too, is that as children, you see your mum maybe struggling in the relationship with the father and then you start taking on the responsibility. I mean, I took on the responsibility for my mum's emotions when I was in utero because yeah. I could very clearly feel that this 21-year-old woman was not a woman at all. She was still, in her mind, a very young girl um, and kind of, you know, got swept up in all the getting married, having a baby thing, but she was still you know she still had all her, her stuff with her own mother going on and I I realized um and I think it's probably part of my makeup as well is that well you know I'm probably gonna have to take control here gonna have to be responsible for making my mum's life easier because I can sense that she's not able to cope with the world 
Mm. So I came out of the womb like being responsible for the world, you know. So no wonder I ended up with with shoulder and neck issues as well. Yes. You know, took responsibility for my father and his his inability to process his emotions. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm pretty empathic as well. So a lot of empathic children do that. And they believe that, you know, if 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 their parents are struggling or maybe dad's got anger issues or something, if they, if they embody the sadness or the anger, the rage into their own bodies, then that parent is going to um, be less angry. And then, um, you know, life's going to be easier for them, but that's, that's not the case. You can't take somebody's emotion away no. from them. You can just, you know, you can just feel their emotions and then we end up taking it on as our own. So a lot of the, the energy, the emotion in our body doesn't even belong to us. It's stuff no. that we've embodied from our parents, our partners, our children, from the world of what's going on around us. So, And I remember that with um, you, when you did, I've done some of your ex, extra trainings and that there was one you did. Uh, where we looked at, you know, is this actually yours or does it belong to someone else? And getting going back into, into utero experiences and saying, well, if it belongs to someone else, whose is it? Oh, it's my mother's. And out of 100%, how much does it belong to them? Oh, it's about 90%. So now, because the baby in the womb doesn't know that it's separate from mum, and I, this is all the stuff I learned from you, that it does not know it's separate from, its environment is mum. And of course, grandmother, because you're you're the ovum and the mum's ovary, and when she's in her mother's womb, so you you just don't know you're se you're separate from you get to be your own person. Yes, but you don't know that. It's, this is why this work we do is so powerful because we can take people back to the the moment of the decision making where we went, oh, I'm responsible here, and say, actually, no, you're not. It's not even your stuff. And exactly. that moment, I see the light bulbs go off in my clients' brains when they realise. I've been carrying this stuff my whole life and I never didn't even have to. Yeah. And the clue is, is when you say to somebody, how long have you felt this way or how long have you had this? It's like, well, it's forever. Yeah. So that means that potentially it's either, it's usually, um, it's usually in utero. So the utero is like our time in utero, our birth experience, our conception, time in utero, our birth experience, our first years of, of life make up the foundations of who we are. Mm. So if we, you know, if mum's feeling great and she's feeling loved, she's feeling supported, she's um, free calm. to be herself, calm, absolutely, you know, does her yoga meditation in the morning what you know does her sewing whatever it is that 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 person um that mother needs then the the energy we, we started off talking about energy as well so there's so much creative energy that can go into growing that baby and that baby's physical mental and emotional development starts in that time so if mum's in an abusive relationship and is scared for her life and she's got all that cortisol going around, then of course that's going to make an effect on the mm. baby and how the baby develops. And then we have our wonderful birthing situations that happen with all the medical prevention uh, interventions and things like this. Again, another big trauma in life. So already, you know, tr conception can be traumatic or it can be beautiful. Mm, mm. And then coming so, into this world, there you are. You're, you're already, from the moment you're conceived, beyond in fight or flight yes and you just don't know any different and then of yeah. course you get to this adult life and you go burn out autoimmune disease. I mean this is why autoimmune diseases are 80 percent as women because we're yeah. the ones who don't express the emotions and are carrying the fight or flight response that then leads to the body just saying no I can't do this anymore shut down mm. chronic fatigue MS osteoporosis and then people say oh it's because of the loss of estrogen and it's like well actually if that was the case every woman would get it you know every woman would get osteoporosis and every woman would have a heart attack but then we go well we know again the the, the issues in the tissues so let's look at what's going on for you emotionally what are your beliefs what programs have you been running since the moment you were conceived and before yeah, and whose programs are you running yes and then and then let's heal those because that's when you can finally go the body is just listening to whatever it's receiving um through the messages of the emotions so then if the um, the emotions change the, the physical health changes absolutely absolutely and you're just reminding me of um dr robert scares um talk that i listened to where he was saying that um 
women and children hold shock and trauma in their gut, right? And oh, women and wow. children are designed to freeze. And this comes back to when we were living in tribes, right? We still live in tribes, but it's a slightly different to uh, how it was before. Um, whereas men are not designed to, to freeze because if an invading tribe's coming in, right? So men are coming in to take over your tribe. If all the men went into shock and freeze, then you would just be taken over very easily. So the men are designed to fight. Women and children, because they are, we are not physically um, able to, to fight as well as men, we're designed to freeze, all right? Shut down, yes. freeze. Wow. Because if we go out fighting, we're more likely to be killed. So when that invading tribe comes in, if there's a really good couple of the men are really good fighters and they observe them, then they're going to want to adopt them into the tribe because we want to build the tribe that that's stronger. So we want good men that are good fighters um, and we want to be able to take over the women and the children. All right. So we're, we're this biological it, it's something that's not conscious it's it's unconscious yeah, it's, it's, our body innate. it's innate yes, yeah it's innate and it gets stored in our stomach so what happens in our stomach is that digestion you know we yeah. have all these little gut bacteria you know good and bad that live in our stomach and they are conscious beings they're little conscious beings and they react to how the environment is you know, just like the cells, Bruce Lipton talks about how our cells, you know, re respond to the environment. Well, so do our gut bacteria. And if you're living in that fight, flight, freeze throughout your childhood or as a woman in a marriage, you're um, you're dumbing down your good gut bacteria and the bad bac gut, gut bacteria is thriving because that's what it thrives on. It thrives on yeah. the cortisol. So that's why does. so many women and less men have autoimmune diseases. Yeah, that makes total sense because everything comes from the gut as well. Like the gut is yeah. the is the powerhouse of our um, our immunity and everything. So if that's not thriving, as we now know, and I've just that's part of the reason I think I I know I've re reversed my perimenopausal symptoms is because I've done a eight month gut protocol and a parasite cleanse and just gone it down and done all the different things that I know to get my body back into balance because serotonin is 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 it comes from the gut yeah i didn't know that till about a year ago and i went oh my goodness and here we are taking all these ssri inhibitors and all the things and 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 blocking out our serotonin and it all comes back to so you, you know and if you look at ibs and crohn's and all of those they're predominantly in women yeah so yeah that makes yeah. so much sense to me i've learned something today so thank you for that you're wow. very welcome yeah yeah i'll send you that video it's very very powerful yeah. because you know going back to look at how we used to live in tribes you know it, it just made so much sense to me it was yeah. like oh my god that's why you know i as a child or well, teenager had ibs and that kicked yeah. off when my mum and dad were divorcing and i also went through not only were my mum and dad divorcing but i also went through a breakup of my first love um, which was such a powerful experience, but the loss of him at the same time as the as my mum and dad splitting up, and being the responsible person I am, taking on all the responsibility for my mum and especially my dad because he could never process why my mum was leaving him, which is another interesting story because he ended up with dementia, right? And I believe it started at that point, yeah, but also conflict. goes back. To when he was born not long after he was born his mother died of tb separation conflict yes so my mother leaving him re-triggered that re triggered yes 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 and then what... he said to me my brain is shrinking and when he had an mri scan his prefrontal cortex was was shrinking all right Whoa. prefrontal cortex is all the bit that we use social you know, reasoning different... yeah yeah but also bonding you know the baby's brain in utero, the first three parts of our brain, the reptilian, the emotional, and the um, cortex, the limbic system and the, the cortex, is all developed in utero. But the yes. prefrontal cortex is developed afterwards After. and through our experience of bonding or lack of bonding. You know, So he went through a massive trauma, was, was taken on by his auntie, um, who was very 
anyway, that's a, a whole nother yeah. story. But my mum leaving him triggered the dementia. So, and it's so fascinating when you know all of this and you can see the patterns. Like I see it in people all the time, and I put the good vibes out to them because I go, because you know I've got I, I know people with osteoporosis and arthritis and all these issues, and I'm looking at them and you know they're they're you know not not feeling confident enough not feeling good enough all of the things that are typical and I'm sitting there going oh I can see where this is coming from oh I know what this is about and you mentioned yep. dementia because the from the biocompass meta health perspective the root yeah the root cause of dementia is a separation conflict I say to people all the time I say you know when they say their parents are getting have got dementia and I say oh any random question but as you have any separation conflicts oh yes they lost a child at this age or yes their mother died when they were this age and or well, they separated or divorced at this age and I'm sitting there thinking hmm, that's yeah. possibly the trigger yeah yeah, yeah. and so the symptoms don't always show up at the time of the conflict at it the usually time, comes no yeah comes no. comes later because it takes time to to start affecting the cells and everything starts to break down or yeah whatever yeah definitely and that's the thing with the hormone imbalance it doesn't yes. happen overnight it's not no. like, you don't wake up one day oh my gosh my hormones are out of balance I'm getting hot flushes well how have you been the last 20 years yes yes how have you actually been oh I've been a bit of a stress head I've been completely mm. you know fight or flight and they go well this mm. is this is a process exactly mm. exactly yeah but the All good right, news is, is, yeah, there's so much people can do now to, to help. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, we, we could talk for hours yeah. and hours and hours. Um, so just as a final thing, is there anything else that you would like to either add to our conversation and then tell people how they can connect with you if they want yeah. to work with you? Well, I'd like to plug my own podcast if that's okay. It's 25 Absolutely. minute episodes covering all things health and wellbeing. It's called Healthy and Healed with Sonia. It's on Spotify. I haven't got it onto Apple Podcast yet. One of those jobs to do. I would just say this to anyone who's watching this. Don't be afraid of what's going to come up if you go and do healing work. Because what's already, it's already there. It's already affecting your life in negative and less than resourceful ways. It already exists. The only difference is when you face it and deal with it and heal it with the pro approaches that people like Sharon and I use, is it's a gentle approach that allows you to shift through it a lot quicker than if you have to go and sit and talk about it and bring it up, go over and over again. Be open to just going with approaches that integrate the mind and body because that's where you're going to get the outcomes as opposed to just thinking, oh, I have to go to a talk therapist and talk for hours. It doesn't work like that anymore. Mm. No. no. Give it a go. Exactly. You will not, no one ever, no one ever regrets going, oh, I really regret that healing journey. Yeah. And one, one thing I will add here as well is <clears throat> take action now. Don't wait yes. for the symptoms. Yeah, because as human beings, like we don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, I feel really great today. I'm going to go and book a session with Sonia or Sharon because I feel so great. We don't do that. We wait until we've got something that's like, I feel really uncomfortable and if this is unbearable now and we have to be pushed and pushed and pushed mm -hmm. into it. So research what it takes to have a healthy body, research what it takes to have a healthy mind. And, you know, we're, we're happy to help you with all of that. Yes, so, we are. Thank you so much. Love you lots. You. You're so great. Thank you. Thank you